So let's talk about the safety and robustness of the visual level security. This episode will, will assume that you have watched part one, where I explain the introduction, basics, and implementation guide of visual level security. So let's get right into it. Uh, as you remember, the visual level security requires that you tag the visuals with their access scope. So you basically tell Power BI that, hey, the visual on the left hand side, I want to see just Poland. That's the standard access. While in the visual on the right hand side, I want to see some more countries. So the extended access scope that is also in our user to countries mapping table. Uh, but what will happen if you forget to tag your visual to the respective access scope? It can happen. Your reports do not, will, do not usually look like this one that I am presenting. It doesn't have two visuals and one page. They will have probably like 10 pages and 10 visuals per page. So you can just accidentally forget to tag some visual. It's a human error, basically. So what will happen? I specifically untagged uh, one of the visuals, and here we can see that this is a problem. If we forget to tag a uh, visual, then we will see uh, more data than we intended to. So in this case, we don't want to see that much data in the visual that is maybe confidential if we show more than one country, more than Poland in this specific example. So what can we do about it? We can leverage some more techniques to make it more robust, like for example, here is one example. We can just blank out the whole visual. But before I show you some error handling methods, let's just think on what can we do and how do we implement it. So basically, uh, how can we first uh, see when do we have a problem so we do not have an access scope defined? Remember, this is a filter that comes from our access scope table that has just one row and one column. So we could potentially see how many distinct rows do we have in the current filter context so of the visual. Uh, and if that will be equal to one, that means that we are properly uh, tagged and only one stand scope will be visible. So we are safe. If we have more than one visible, it means that we have forgot to tag something proper, probably. So that's bad. That's the situation when we want to handle the error. And now, how do we implement it quickly and across the whole report? Well, you can use a calculation group for that cause that I already have turned on. Uh, so let's see the visual uh, level security with the calculation group that makes it more robust. I have the visual already, the calculation group already defined, and let's walk through it together. So first, I am checking how many rows do I have visible, many, how many unique rows, uh, how many unique values in the access scope column do I have visible uh, in the table. So. I want to have not more than one, so more than one is bad, basically. If we have um, not more than one, then we just return the selected measure. This is basically the good situation. Now, the bad situation is one of these. Uh, so these are the three error handling methods, methods that I want to propose to you. Which one will you use depends uh, on your preference. So first, we have an option to show a blank and empty table. So that's what you saw happening, basically. Let's remove the filter once again. And you can see that nothing pops up in the table. Uh, that's OK. Uh, that is That for sure makes, uh, makes sure uh, that we do not have any data leak or data too much data shown for any data confidentiality purposes. But this might also be a bit difficult to troubleshoot and notice. Let's see another option. Uh, let's assume the least privilege method. So we just say that, hey, we know that the standard access is the least one, while the extended is a bit, uh, bit more. So the smallest privilege that we can grant is the standard access. So in case we do not uh, have an access scope defined, we will just default to standard. So show just Poland, so just the, the role that you have access to. So. Um, now I will remove that, and you can see that there is just Poland. And similarly, if I uh, remove the filter on the right-hand side, there will be just Poland. No extended access, just Poland by default if we forget to tag it. So just your 
safest option possible. And now the last option, uh, probably the most brutal, so to say, but also the one that is easy to troubleshoot if you have a CI/CD process and a proper testing uh, environment so that your testers will be able to catch such a problem is to just return an error and an error that I have specifically set, specified here. So I'm saying that the access scope was not specified for this visual. We must tag it, basically. So when I unclick it again, you can see that the whole visual went uh, into, an, into an error and there's our specific error message, which says what we told it to say. You can also provide like an email to your technical team uh, to fix this um, in this in this error. So that's it when it comes to uh, securing the visual level security and the error handling. How do we actually use the, uh, the safety switch? So I have my visual level security, the uh, calculation group here, that's the name, uh, the, the column, and I have it applied across all of the pages. I'm just clicking on and I'm making an assumption that each time uh, that we are changing something in the report, we are publishing it, we can make sure that this is turned on uh, and we do not kill this uh, calculation group by mistake. You can lock it, you can hide it, but this is the assumption. In that case, nothing will break. But if you, for some reason, forget to tag to put the visual level security safety switch on, well, it will be a problem for sure. But well, anyway, I think that this is the most uh, robust way and robust way. And just checking each time if we have our safety switch on uh, is possible and doesn't require too much attention. You can just add it to your checklist, basically. With that, we will conclude uh, and we have talked over uh, the whole visual level security implementation process and also making it safe and robust. I hope that this is, will be helpful for you. Thanks and see you in the next episode.